Illustrative Math Geometry. Unit 1, Lesson 20 is called Transformations, Transversals, and Proof. All right, so our goals today are I can define alternate interior angles and prove why they are congruent using rigid motion. I can define corresponding angles and prove why they are congruent using rigid motion. And I can find missing angles of parallel lines cut by a transversal. So as you look at this, you might be noticing right away, there's some new vocab here, alternate interior angles and corresponding angles, and maybe the word transversal too, okay? So everything else you should know, <clears throat> but those are the new things that we're going to be learning about today. So um, parallel lines, okay, lines that never intersect. So right here, I got a little picture, M and N are parallel. I put a little note there that they're parallel. Um, so we can, we know that M and N are parallel. A transversal is a line that cuts through two other lines. So T is your transversal here. Okay. Corresponding angles. Okay. Corresponding angles are basically a translation. Okay. So as I look here, my corresponding angles are kind of like one and five. I look at one right here. If I just translate this angle right there, it's the same angle as five. Okay. And likewise, if I look at a different angle, let's say I look at angle two here. Angle two translates to six and then same thing with three right here angle three translates to seven and angle eight translates to oops translates to four Okay, so all the corresponding angles are, I'll use the highlighter here so you can see them. So one corresponds with five, three corresponds with seven, two corresponds with six, and four with eight. So we have four pairs of corresponding angles, okay? Um, corresponding angles are always congruent if the lines are parallel, okay? <clears throat> All right, alternate exterior angles. So what we have to do is we have to think of the interior of the parallel lines right there, and outside of the parallel lines is the exterior, okay? So think of it like this. This part on the inside of the parallel lines is the interior, and then outside is the and the red is the exterior. Okay, so alternate means on opposite sides of the transversal and exterior of the parallel lines, okay? So right here, opposite sides of transversal and exterior of parallel lines. Okay, so <clears throat> we have two pairs here. We have seven and two, and then we have one and eight, okay? Oh, I'm doing, that's exterior, whoops. I, I guess I skipped one, whoops, let me, um, let me come down here. So I started with alternate exterior angles. So obviously interior is the same thing. It's just on the inside. So I'll put it right here and I'll do the alternate interior. Sorry about that. Okay, so my alternate interiors will be 
right here. Let me erase the exteriors. Alternate interior would be these angles here, five and four and three and six. So we have two pairs of alternate interior angles. <clears throat> okay. Vertical angles. We already learned about vertical angles. Let me move these like a little exterior, interior shades that I had. So vertical angles are across from each other. So vertical would be two and three, one and four, seven and six, five, whoops, five and eight. Okay, so we have four pairs of vertical angles. Linear pair would be two angles that form a straight line. So a linear pair, we actually have a lot of them. One and two would be a linear pair. Two and four would be a linear pair. Three and four is a linear pair. They form a line. And one and three would be a linear pair. So there's four linear pairs up there. And then same thing here, five and six, six and eight, seven and eight, and five and seven, okay? <clears throat> And then same side interior um, is just what it looks like. Um, same side of the transversal, but on the interior, okay? So same side interior. All right, so um, I guess I should have kept writing this here. Um, alternate interior angles are congruent. Alternate exterior angles are congruent. Same side interior are supplementary. So that means that they add to 180 degrees, okay? Same thing with the linear pair. These are supplementary. And vertical angles are congruent. Okay. <clears throat> and this is all, these ones here are if they're parallel lines. So I'll put a check. These ones are only for if the two lines are parallel. Vertical angles are always congruent. You don't need parallel lines. Linear pair is always supplementary. We don't need parallel lines there. <clears throat> All right, so this is what I just talked about, alternate interior angle theorem. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. <clears throat> and then the opposite way, conversely, if two lines are cut by a transversal and the alternate interior angles are congruent, then we can conclude that the lines are parallel, okay? Same thing with corresponding angles. If two lines are two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, corresponding angles are always congruent. And on the other um, way, con conversely, if um, <clears throat> if two corresponding angles are congruent, then we can conclude that the lines are parallel. Okay. <clears throat> so using what we just learned, um, let's figure out what some of these are. So this would be forty because these are corresponding angles. Okay, and again, corresponding is a translation. So if you're ever not sure, just like trace it with tracing paper and move it down and be like, oh yeah, they look like exactly the same angle. So yes, they are 40. <clears throat> Alternate interior. Okay, these are congruent. And again, use your tracing paper if you're not sure. Trace it. And this is going to be a little, little different. I got to rotate and then translate, but you can see they're the same angle. Okay. Um, these are, do not say 98 here. This is wrong. Okay. Do not do that. Okay. And, and you can kind of tell right here by looking. This is an acute angle at X 
and this looks obtuse. So if you're not sure, you know, take it, move it down here. Oh yeah, it doesn't quite look right. But if I keep turning it, fits in perfectly right there. So that means they form a straight line. So they are a linear pair. So I'd have to do a little math here, 180 minus 98. I guess these two are not a linear pair, but if I translate it over there, it's a linear pair, but they're supplementary. So I would say that's 82. So 82. And these are alternate exteriors, so this is 125. And again, let's take a look here. I trace it. I rotate it. I translate it. And you can see that they are definitely indeed congruent. All right, so use rigid motions to show angles EBI and BCJ are congruent. So EBI is right here and BCJ. So these are corresponding angles. We already know they're congruent. So I'm just going to write some directions and I've kind of already showed you. I'm just going to translate it. Okay, and here's my directed line segment. My directed line segment is BC. So here's my directions. Translate angle EBI by directed line segment BC. Okay, and that's it. We just did it. When we do a translation, we keep angles the same, and there we go. So alternate interior angles, A, A, B, C, and B, C, J. So let me get rid of these. Let me move this out of here. So A, B, C, and B, C, J. So I'm going to need to take angle A, B, C. I'm going to need to translate until B aligns, or translate by direct line segment BC, and then rotate 180 degrees, centered at C. So I'll start out by translate angle ABC by directed line segment BC, and then rotate angle a prime b prime c prime 180 degrees <clears throat> centered at c all right so once i get there rotate it centered at c again my smart notebook here does not let me change the center of rotation when I do it so but there it is okay so we just did it all right so let's find this so these are vertical angles so this is going to be 80 degrees vertical angles are always congruent okay same side interior these are you know I'm going to write these on here I'm going to say vertical Okay. These are same side interior. And these add up to 180. So 180 minus 142 gives me 38. All right, so uh, 36 and Y are alternate interior, so these are going to be equal. So these are alternate interior. And then these two are a linear pair, so 180 minus 36 will give me 144. Okay? All right, um, let's see here. 118 and X. So these are nothing. These two angles are nothing. So what you have to do is move one of the angles. So this angle here and this angle are corresponding. So I could basically move the X here 
And look, if you see this here, if I trace this angle, you can see it. Okay, there you go. The corresponding is a translation. So these are a linear pair. So 180, so this would be corresponding and then a linear pair. 180 minus 118 gives me 62. So if 62 is here, it's also 62 right there. Okay. Here's, these angles are nothing. So we're going to have to move one of them. So let's move this one. This one here corresponds right up there. So this is going to be x plus 3. So these two form a linear pair. So they are supplementary. So x plus 3 plus 5x plus 3 equals 180. 6x plus 6 equals 180. And I get 29. Okay. So x equals 29. Um, if they asked me to find the angles, we'd have to plug it in. So this would be 29 plus 3. So this would be 32 degrees. And this would be 5 times 29 plus 3. Be 148. Okay. All right, these are corresponding angles, so we just set them equal because we know corresponding angles are congruent. As long as the lines are parallel. They tell us in all these the parallel lines. So x is 16. I want to find the angles. I really only have to do it once because you're going to get the same thing. 4 times 16 plus 8. So I would get this as 72 degrees. Okay. All right. So back to our goals. I can define alternate interior angles and prove why they're congruent using rigid motions. I can define corresponding angles and prove why they are congruent using rigid motions. And I can find missing angles of parallel lines cut by a transversal. I think we're pretty good with all of these. So I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.